Are you thinking it might be time to buy a home? Are you curious what the difference is between renting and buying and the pros and cons of each? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the trade-offs, including when is the right time to buy and how to understand the financials. So this is a long one, but full of lots of great information. So stay tuned as we get into all the details. Hi, I'm Teresa Wellman with HomeownerExperience.com, a local San Jose, California realtor. I like to provide details and real information to my clients to empower them to make the right decisions for themselves. So today we're going to talk a little bit about renting versus buying. So let's get right into the pros and cons. So I'm going to start with renting because you're probably most familiar with that if you're watching this video. So what are the same, some of the pros to renting? Maybe you have your own list, but here's a list that I could think of. It's low maintenance. You have a problem with the place, you just call your landlord and they fix it for you. You've got a lot of flexibility. You can move when your lease is up or when you feel like it. And you don't have to worry about a lot of prep or uh, finding someone to replace you. There are definitely less upfront costs, maybe only one to two months of rent as a security deposit. And you only need renter's insurance, not a full home insurance policy. And lastly, you may have extra cash to invest or save. Now let's look at the cons of renting. Well, first, you must follow the terms of the lease agreement and you may not like what is written in that lease agreement. The worst I think is sometimes you have to move when your landlord tells you, not on your own timing. And that can be really inconvenient or difficult if you've got children in school or many other factors um, that could really put a wrench in your life at that time. And the cost of rent goes up often. You can't control your payment from one year to the next. And if your payment gets too high, you may be forced to move just because of financial reasons. You can't do major remodeling or decorating to suit the property to your taste because it's not your property. And you're paying the landlord's mortgage. Do you really wanna pay their mortgage for them? Well, and renting offers no wealth creation or return on your investment. It's just money to put a roof over your head every month. And lastly, likely you have to work through a management company for repairs, which may take things longer to get dealt with. So now let's talk about buying and what the pros and cons of buying a home are. The biggest pro, in my opinion, is the long-term security. You also get to be part of a community and establish yourself. If you're raising children, it provides a sense of a stability and allows them to attend the same schools. You also have a locked payment for 30 years. There is a tax benefit, including capital gains exemptions if you go to sell the property. So one of the other points is a tax benefit. You definitely get uh, some monthly or yearly deductions from your taxes as a benefit for owning a home. And long-term, if you do go to sell it and you've made a good profit, there is an exemption on capital gains for some of that profit. A house is an appreciating investment in asset to add your portfolio and your overall wealth strategy. And you can change your house, remodel it, suit it to your needs. You want a pet shower or a pet bath? Go ahead, add it, you can do that. You want a giant master bathroom? You can do that as well. So you have a lot less limitations and ability, a huge ability to customize the property to meet your needs. I think one of the other great things is there's no landlord to tell you what to do, what not to do. You get to do what you want to do. And you have future potential for financial backing by using your home equity. Maybe it's to reinvest into your property to make it the way you want, or maybe it's to pay for other future needs. And if you do own a house, you could eventually rent it out. For example, if it does not meet your needs and you don't want to sell it for some reason, you could potentially rent that out and have a tenant pay your mortgage. Now, what are the cons to buying a home? Well, the cost and time to maintain a property is definitely way more than if you're renting. And there are extra costs like property taxes and homeowner's insurance that you don't pay as a renter and you would as a homeowner. And depending on market conditions of when you buy or sell, the appreciation or potential depreciation could be working for you or against you. So you really need to be smart about your investment and how long you plan to be there. And then of course there is costs and time to sell your property. So you need to calculate those into the overall scenario as well. And having a property ties you in one spot for a while. And that could be a benefit for some people who want to security and stability. But if you're a type of person who likes to move or keep things exciting, might not be the best option for you. So you need to ask yourself some of those questions of what you really want to decide what's the best fit for you. Okay, so you think you might be ready to buy. So what do you need to think about next? 
Let's talk about timing for you. We alluded to that a little bit in the previous video, but I get a lot of people saying, well, I'm too young to buy. You know what? There is no age requirement to buying a house. There's a lot of other important factors. I purchased my first property when I was 24. So you can definitely do it as a young uh, person, as long as you've got some of these other factors taken care of. I think the first one is, are you ready to settle in one place for a long time? Definitely plan if you're going to be purchasing a property to stay there for seven to 10 years, if not more. So are you mentally ready to do that? Have you found the right neighborhood where you want to stay that long? Those are definitely important things to consider whether the timing is right for you. Another big one is, do you have the cash to make the down payment? The best down payment is going to be 20% down, but if you don't have that, there are options, but you know, putting 20% down eliminates the PMI or the private mortgage insurance. It also allows you to get the best overall interest rate. So it's really going to be the best financial situation to put 20% down. But if you don't have 20% down, there are some great scenarios that still may work out for you financially. I recommend you talk to one of my lenders to see what those different options could be for you. I'm going to put a link below to get a list of the lenders I recommend in the San Jose area. The fourth one, of course, is financial stability. I think that's really important. You gotta know that you have job security, that you're not gonna be uh, losing a job or jumping from job um, back and forth seasonally or anything like that. You wanna make sure your income is stable so that you can feel confident in your mortgage payment and being able to handle that into the future. And then are you pre-approved? Really, you need to be pre-approved to really understand if you're able to afford it. This is gonna be one of the final things to talk about is getting pre-approved and making the next step, but that's really important to do before you start looking at properties and really making the final decision if you can buy or not. You need to understand if you can be pre-approved and if it's financially attractive to you. Let's talk about the general timing. There's a, a couple different factors there. Once, if you're emotionally and mentally and financially ready, then you need to talk about the timing of just moving. When would be ideal for you? Do you have a lease that's ending that you need to move at a certain time? Or um, are you able to go month to month? Or do you have a job relocation that you need to be somewhere at a certain amount, at a certain time? All these are important factors that you need to understand. And my advice is to give yourself at least three months before that to be seriously shopping for a house. And that means at that point you're pre-approved or uh, ready to have a loan and um, actively looking to find the right property for you. So don't wait till the last minute because it definitely can take some time to find the right property for you. The other thing is to understand timing is the current market. How do you operate in the current market? Is it a buyer or seller's market? I'm gonna put a link below on how to know that answer. If it is a buyer's market, well, great, right? But if you need to move and it's a seller's market, how do you need to prepare or operate so that you can ensure you get the right house for the right price during the seller's market? I definitely have some tips on that and would love to chat with you more. But one of the important things is preparation. So if you download my home buyer's guide below, that'll give you some of those critical points to preparation that will make you ready to make a purchase in any market. And the last thing, of course, is to watch the market and what's going on. Which direction is the market trending? How does that work with your personal timing and when should you jump in? So I have a monthly San Jose market update where I keep all of the people interested informed of what's going on with the current market. You definitely should sign up with that if you are getting close to making a move into the San Jose area or making a home purchase or even a home sale. But no matter what the market is, working with an experienced agent to guide you on how to make the personal timing as well as the market conditions work for your advantage is very important. So definitely reach out to me to discuss this further. Okay, now the last aspect I said I was going to cover is the financial or how are you going to do this? So I want to give you just a general overview of owning a home and what it looks like, and then we'll do a quick rent versus buy analysis and I'll send you some more resources. So if you're mentally ready and think you're financially ready, let's just run some basic numbers to get a quick view. Cause you want, you need to make sure buying is actually affordable for you, right? So now if you're renting, you probably are paying your rent and renter's insurance and not much else for your housing. If you're going to buy, you're going to need to pay your mortgage uh, payment, which is usually a principal payment as well as an interest payment. You're going to need to pay property taxes as well as homeowners insurance, which is going to be a little bit more expensive than renters insurance. You're also going to need to account for some extra money for maintenance and security moving forward uh, with your mortgage payments. So how do you know what budget is going to fit for you and how does that work into home prices? Well, a quick rule of thumb is 28% of your income before taxes 
can go to housing expenses. So what do those numbers look like? So if you make $100,000 a year, that's $8,300 a month before taxes. And at 28% with the rule of thumb, that gives you $2,300 a month to spend on your living expenses. So you can afford a $500,000 condo with 20% down at a 4% interest rate. So let's look at the numbers and how that works. But just to give you an overview, that could be a one bedroom condo in central San Jose or Campbell or a two bedroom condo in Blossom Valley. So it's definitely doable if you have some down payment funds and make $100,000 a year to get into the housing market. So with that scenario of a $500,000 property with a $400,000 loan, because you're putting 20% down, your principal and interest payment would be $1,900, just slightly over. Your homeowner's insurance is likely $100 a month. And in a condo, you're gonna to have to pay HOA. So that is maintenance of the exterior building or the grounds around you, likely around $300 a month. Then you're gonna to have to pay property taxes, which is gonna work out at a $500,000 price point to $520 a month. So the total before any tax benefit is 2,800. If you take into account the tax benefit that the government will give you for owning a property, you likely will be very close to that $2,300 a month to, uh, that we've talked about. Of course, that depends on your tax bracket in different scenarios. So you're really gonna to need to talk to a lender as well as a CPA to definitely figure out those numbers specific for you. Are you currently paying more than that for rent? If so, you might seriously consider how you can get into home ownership and put that money towards an investment that will appreciate for you. So I wanna quickly show you a detailed analysis that I can have run for you. A lot of different factors to consider when you buy and compare it to rent. I had already mentioned a little bit about tax benefit, but there are also things like market appreciation, your monthly cash flow, maintenance and repair costs, all of those items need to be taken into account. So if you look here at this estimated cash flow graphic, you'll see that buying versus renting, there is um, a great difference that first year in cost. Even though your mortgage payment might be less than your rent, you do need to account for property taxes, insurance, maintenance and repairs. So your total monthly expenses end up being more. But if we look at that over long term with appreciation of rent um, and appreciation of a property if you were owning it, how the numbers work out is you actually are financially ahead after 10 years if you were to buy a house, dollar for dollar. So these are some really important criteria to compare. You see also um, the net gain by buying a home is 890,000, of course, with several different variables and assumptions. But if you'd like to play with a model like this, um, I have a really great contact who'd be happy to go through this details with you. So you can really understand real numbers and your personal situation to compare renting versus buying. And the last step I recommend is you try your payment out. If you've gotten pre-approved and you've heard, for example, that your new payment's gonna be $2,800 as we talked about in that scenario, try that out right now um, without the tax benefit. Take the extra money that you're not paying on rent and put it into your savings account. Automatically, have it automatically withdrawn and live a few months like that. Do you feel too tight? Do you not notice a difference? Is it possible by just cutting out some small luxuries like Starbucks coffee every day? Are you able to be comfortable with that kind of payment? If you are, that's a really good indicator that you are ready to financially move towards buying a house. So definitely look into different factors on this. If you'd like to download my home buyer guide to talk about the next steps of going through the process, I recommend you check out the link below. Also, if you need lender recommendations to get pre-approved or understand the finances or a detailed rent versus buy analysis, click the link below to get that list of lenders automatically sent to you. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your interest watching this all the way through. My name is Teresa Wellman with homeownerexperience.com, a local San Jose realtor. Please do subscribe if you like this information I have here and check out my website for more free reports.